Hello everybody, I'm going to do my review for Wrestlemania 25, um, but before I begin I do want to apologize to everybody who does watch my show on uh, a weekly basis. A lot of you are probably wondering why was there no show this past Friday. Um, I had a family emergency, had to go out of state, could not do the show last week. Um, unfortunately, my great aunt passed away this morning at midnight, but... I uh, should be back in time to do the show this week, which will still be the Hall of Fame episode. So then, on to WrestleMania 25. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk, give you a brief review of the matches. I'm not going to do anything about, you know, anything in between. So the first match was Money in the Bank. Um, I think this was one match that a lot of fans were a little bit worried about, you know, if it was going to be... A, an okay match or a good match. This ended up being like the second best match of the night, in my opinion. Um, I thought that went really good. It was a spot fest, but it was a fun spot fest. I mean, just about everybody was doing what they were supposed to do. I was a little bit surprised that CM Punk won that match for a second year in a row. I thought they would have gone. I thought they would have gone. A different round. I thought maybe Sheldon Benjamin could have won it this year. Or maybe even Christian, but, you know, CM Punk, he's got it again. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm upset. I'm proud that he's got it again, but a little bit of a surprise that he did win it for a second year in a row. Then it was the 25 Diva Battle Royal. Um, that match went so quick, I could not even tell some of the... Uh, people from long ago. I could tell Victoria was in there, Molly Holly, Tori Wilson, Sonny was in there. I really couldn't tell much, but Santino Morello once again was absolutely hilarious, you know, dressing up as a woman in drag, Santina. He ended up winning that match, and I don't, and if for any wrestling promotion out there watching, don't hire Mae Young as the, as the timekeeper, because she'll ring the bell like 80,000 times. Uh, so then after that was the Legends match, Chris Jericho and the WWE Legends. Um, you know what? I, this one went better than I thought, especially with Steamboat's performance. And I gotta say, he still got it. Steamboat still has it. 15 years he hadn't been in a match. He hadn't wrestled in a match in 15 years. And he was moving around as if it was, you know... 1989, not 2009, but um, I was a little bit surprised Chris Jericho won that match. I'm glad he did. He had like the longest losing streak in a WrestleMania in a long time, so for him to get the win, you know, sort of good, and then to see the conclusion between him and Mickey Rourke, you know, Rourke with that left jab, you know, sort of a pretty good fitting to an end on that one. Um, after that, the Battle of the Hardys, Man and Jeff, um, you know, I'd have to say, um, it was a good match, I was a little bit disappointed, I thought there'd be more going into that, but Jeff did an unbelievable high-risk maneuver, you know, jumping over the big ladder, trying for that leg drop, and that ending, that twist of fate on the chair, that was absolutely sick, a sick ending, a good ending to that match, with Matt Hardy getting the win, as he really should have. Uh, then the next match was Rey Mysterio against JBL. Now that match, you know, for the 20 plus seconds that it was, it served its purpose. It really did serve its purpose as far as, you know, hey, JBL came back, said he's going to put on a, you know, a performance that would last a lifetime, and then he gets beat in 20 seconds to win the Intercontinental title, raise the new champ, JBL decides he quits. Uh, some of us knew or have read that he was going to retire because of his back injury. And that was really a good way for him to leave, I thought. I thought that was a good way for him to leave WrestleMania on his own terms. Then, Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. What else can be said about this match that has not been said? The bar that I, in my mind, had set for this match, I knew it was going to be a good match, those two went beyond that bar. That match was so incredible. I said I texted to a friend, you know, like no more than two minutes after that match, that that was the greatest match I've ever seen in my life. Those two just went out there 
for almost a half hour. You know, it was just unbelievable. And if you and if you didn't see the Undertaker's chest, his chest was so red from all those chops. The only other wrestler that I could think of whose chest was so red like that was Brian Danielson when he had that mini feud with Roderick Strong and how he just got the crap uh, the crap chapped out or chopped out of him. But you know, if this match number unless there is a better match the rest of the year in 2009, if this match is not the match of the year, it's highway robbery. This match as far as Dave Meltzer and he gives his star ratings, the lowest I could see him giving this match is four and three quarter stars. Because the highest he goes is five stars, and those two had the last five star match in the WWE in the original Hell in a Cell. What a match. That was the match of the night, no doubt about it. And then the triple threat match, uh, John Cena, Big Show, and Edge. That match was a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. Excuse me. I thought it was going to be a crappy match, but it ended up being somewhat entertaining, you know. And, yeah, I think we sort of knew John Cena was going to win that match, you know. Because he's not, you know, in any relationship with Vicky. All he wanted was the world title. He got it. He won it. I liked the ending to that match. Um... I thought it was a, a good ending to that match. And then the last match, Triple H and Randy Orton, of the two you know, title matches, the two big ones, this was the one to have expected to be the best of the two, when in fact it was not. Um, I felt that they blew a tremendous opportunity using the idea that if Triple H got disqualified or counted out, he'd lose the title. And I'll tell you where they blew it. When Triple H kicked Randy Orton in the head, when the referee was down, he had that sledgehammer in. What they should have done is the referee should have gotten up, Triple H with the sledgehammer in his hand, Orton down. The ref thinks that Triple H hit Orton with the sledgehammer, ring the bell, Orton wins the title. That should have been the ending to that match. But it wasn't. Triple H stayed the champ. A little bit disappointed on that. Um, but I'm sure that that storyline is not over. So, um, the three best matches of the night, to me, in this order, Undertaker Michaels is number one. Um, Money in the Bank, number two. And Jericho and the Legends are number three. That's my top three. If I had to pick... The worst match, and I'm going to surprise people here, I picked the main event. I would pick the WWE title match only because of the last five minutes of that match, how it ended. If that match had ended any other way, I'd probably say the Battle Royal was the worst match. But, you know, all in all, this WrestleMania is going to get two big thumbs up from me. For the Undertaker Michael match, for Steamboat's performance, and for Money in the Bank. And that crowd was just into everything until about the end of the night. And, you know, when this comes out on DVD, if you have not seen it, I would definitely recommend picking this show up. Or if you're wanting to watch the replay this week, get the replay. It is worth the 50 bucks. Or if you have HD, the 55 bucks. To get this show, I would definitely recommend you get WrestleMania 25.